Greetings everyone and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. In light of the present turmoil and chaos relating to Russia, Europe, Ukraine, the Crimean Peninsula and of course the United States of America, the question is, does the Bible have anything to say about Russia's future, Russia's prophesied future? I recently did a program on Ukraine in prophecy Today I'd like to talk about Russia in prophecy and other nations which will have a bearing insofar as Russia is concerned. And you might be surprised to learn that a war is clearly prophesied in the Bible involving Russia and involving other nations. But surprisingly, perhaps, no war is prophesied between Russia and the United States of America prior to the return of Jesus Christ. Now, many feel that a war between the United States of America and Russia will take place, but the Bible doesn't indicate that. Now, we have had close encounters in the past, think of the time of President Kennedy and Mr. Khrushchev, but the war didn't take place, and there is no indication that there will be a war between Russia and the United States of America, but the Bible makes it very clear that there's going to be a very, very terrible war going on between Russia and allies of Russia on the one hand and Europe on the other hand. Now, right now we are focusing on the terrible situation pertaining to Ukraine and Crimea. And of course, many people feel that Mr. Putin is not attached to reality anymore as German Chancellor Angela Merkel stated when she had talked to Mr. Putin and Madame Albright has the same impression. And we are looking towards Secretary of State John Kerry to see whether he can try to do something here to bring about a peaceful solution. At the same time, specifically European papers look at European foreign ministers, including the German foreign minister Walter Steinmeier, to see whether there could be a peaceful solution. Now, Mrs. Hillary Clinton went further and compared Mr. Putin's actions with actions which Germany perpetrated in World War II. And interestingly enough, though, his position that the ousted leader of Ukraine, the former president of Ukraine, is still the legitimate leader, is according to international law, apparently, and the law of the Ukrainian constitution a correct statement as Der Spiegel Online just recently published an article about. But at the same time, his invasion of Crimea is of course in total violation of even treaties Russia has made with Ukraine and the United States of America and Great Britain. I'm thinking of the Budapest Memorandum, but there are also other treaties. And of course Mr. Putin has blatantly lied to the international community when he said that there are no Russian troops on the grounds whereas by now apparently 160,000 are already there. And he said, oh, these are just Ukrainian freedom fighters sympathetic to Russia. I mean, a most blatant lie. But you see, the situation is very volatile. But we also find that certain collaborations are taking place now. And Europe is coming together on the one hand. And Russia and China, as I will show you, are coming together on the other hand, and that is all in light of biblical prophecy. Now, when you know a little bit about the book of Revelation, you find that there are seven seals described. And those seven seals are actually describing prophetic events, which are going to take place just prior to the return of Jesus Christ. And when you look at the fifth trumpet, because the seventh seal is divided into seven trumpets. So if you look at the fifth trumpet, of the seventh seal, you find some interesting developments described. You find it in Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. And by the way, we have a booklet prepared, Biblical Prophecy, from now until forever. It's absolutely free for the asking. And this booklet goes into what I am giving you today as a synopsis in much more detail. And it describes the fifth trumpet and the fact that a power is emerging, coming out of the bottomless pit, that power is actually none other than a unified European power block led by the beast, a very famous figure, the beast. But the word beast can also refer to the power itself. 
it can refer to the leader of that power and the power and here is described an attack in Revelation chapter 9 beginning in verse 1 up to verse 12 an attack of the beast power against far eastern nations including Russia including China including Japan including India and yes apparently including Ukraine showing that these far eastern nations will be collaborating now the beast is prompted to do that as you read in the book of Daniel in the 11th chapter because he is hearing these rumors from those regions and he is very concerned that they are preparing a war which apparently they are those far eastern nations and so the beast is trying to strike a preemptive strike and so this is being described in that fifth trumpet but then you read about the sixth trumpet the next event and you read that in Revelation chapter 9, beginning in verse 13, all the way up until verse 21, where kings from the east are described, those eastern, far eastern nations, and they will launch a counterattack, a very brutal, extremely brutal counterattack against Europe. Now let me read to you from our booklet a few excerpts. It says here, the sixth trumpet describes the retaliation of the Asian nations and foretells the appearance of an invading army of notice 200 million soldiers from the East shortly after Europe's invasion of the Middle East now that's another topic and they will kill a third of mankind as the book of Revelation tells us apparently this is the second stage of a total war between at that time mainly the European power block and a power block of Eastern nations and of course you have other scriptures which go into this now I just mentioned there is going to be an army of 200 million soldiers. There is no way in the world that it could just be Russia or that it could just be China. It has to be combined forces to bring about such a great number of soldiers invading Europe. Now, I found very interesting an article by Sky News dated March 5 saying this. Russia has said China is largely in agreement over Ukraine after other world powers condemned Moscow for sending troops into the country. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov discussed Ukraine by telephone with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi on Monday and claimed they had broadly coinciding points of view on the situation there, according to a ministry statement. You see, events pertaining to Ukraine, pertaining to Crimea, can bring about a collaboration a unification of Far Eastern nations. At the same time, they can and will and are bringing about a collaboration of European nations. Because the article goes on to say, as the 10th standoff continues, the other seven nations of the G8 urged Moscow to hold talks with Kiev. We, the leaders of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom and the United States, and the President of the European Council and President of the European Commission, join together today to condemn the Russian Federation's clear violation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, the statement said. So again, it is all clearly in line of biblical prophecy. These events have to take place in order to bring about these two power blocks, which then the Bible says will fight against each other. We say in our booklet that the actions of the Asian nations will be ruthless and merciless. They will use nuclear weapons of mass destruction and kill one-third of mankind. Other passages tell us that ultimately, ultimately, Europe will be destroyed by these Asian nations. And so this war is going to be a continuing war and we find another event being described in the book of Revelation when it comes to the sixth plague of the seventh trumpet because the seventh trumpet then is also divided into seven plagues and at the time of the sixth plague that's described in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12 those Asian nations will invade the Middle East and will assemble at Armageddon together with other nations with other powers apparently in the attempt to fight each other but then they will combine their forces to move towards Jerusalem to fight yes you guessed it the returning Jesus Christ so you see the time element here you see how these events lead to the return of Jesus Christ. But when those Far Eastern nations, including Russia, including China, 
including Ukraine, including Japan, including India and other nations, when they will invade the Middle East, parts of their troops will in fact sweep through Europe and create great havoc over there. And our free booklet, Biblical Prophecy from Now Until Forever, goes into these events in great detail. At the same time, we have another booklet prepared, The Ten European Revivals of the Ancient Roman Empire. And that booklet proves from history that, yes, in fact, Europe will unite one more time. It has already united several times in its history. It will unite one more time in these end times and then fulfill prophetic roles as I have just described today. And, of course, there's a lot more to be said. Now, you might wonder about what's the role of the United States of America and all of that. Let me just tell you, my friends, when these events take place as I described them today, the United States of America will play no more political military role in the world. And there are reasons for that. And we have other free booklets which describe those events and the causes for what I have just said. So I would strongly encourage you, my friends, if you want to see what is happening right now in Russia, in Ukraine, in Europe, in the United States of America, in Great Britain, and how it all relates to biblical prophecy, to ask for our free literature, including the, the booklets on prophecy from now until forever and the revivals of the European empires. And of course, we have other booklets, too. They're all completely free for the asking. No follow-up, no request for money. All you need to do is to send you and to send us your address so we can provide you with those free gifts. So I thank you very much for your listening and for your interest in what we have to tell you based on God's Word. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.